Warning, the following presentation contains cold, hard truths that might change the way you think. Viewer discretion won't do you any good now. Attention all gamers. The time has come to revisit what is considered by many to be the greatest video game ever made. I'm talking, of course, about Strawberry Vinegar, where you play as a cynical schoolgirl who has no friends until a demon steals a tray of her cookies and they get wrapped up in a zany lesbian relationship. Okay, this actually sounds pretty tight. Oh, and it's getting good reviews. Well, this joke backfired. It's been nine years since the release of Terraria, and on its nine-year anniversary, the game received its final major update ever, version 1.4, aka Journey's End. Now, while this update does mark the end of Terraria as an ongoing project, it's hard to be upset when you realize how gigantic 1.4 is. This is probably the biggest update this game has ever and will ever receive, because it's ending. God damn it. Here are just some of the new features that were recently added to the game. New biomes, more detailed world gen, block swap, a new pylon-based teleporting system, the NPC happiness and town system, gem trees, over 1,000 new items, I don't even know how that's possible, including new weapons, the stepping stool, and the dirt bomb, a complete overhaul on lots of the game's sprites and animations, which renders all texture mods totally pointless, Except for the 3D one. That shit was crazy. There's a better achievement guide now. A full-on bestiary. Rebalanced enemies and bosses. Health bars for the bosses. New bosses. Journey mode. Master mode. Emotes. Golf. And my personal favorite, lots of new music. Believe it or not, that still isn't everything. In fact, I tend to avoid reading the full 1.4 change log. It just makes my fucking head hurt. Now, although this update has been covered to death by people like Chippy Gaming, Python, Happy Days, and many others who are way better at Terraria YouTubing than I will ever be, I just had to make a video for it. I mean, it's the final Terraria update. In fact, I was so excited for Journey's End that I decided to hunker down and try my best to finally acquire all of the PS4 trophies for this game. And I am so close, I, I just have one left. I mean, I think that's impressive enough. Look, <clears throat> uh, Kristen Stewart, pre-lesbian haircut. I know you really want to hang out with me because I'm brooding like Robert Pattinson, but I'm very busy trying to collect the rest of these pets. I mean, this is going to take me like, I don't even, is this even possible? Honestly, is this trophy even possible? Some of these pets take so long to farm. The bone key? Are you kidding me? Who is out there getting the bone key? Get the fuck out of here. You know, I have an even better idea of something I can do to commemorate the end of Terraria. Since this is the journey's end, why don't we travel back to the journey's beginning and pay a visit to the very first world I ever made. As in, the first time I ever played Terraria. June 7th, 2015, on the Xbox 360. I feel like that should be my actual birthday, because for the past five years, I have felt pretty alive. Now, right off the bat, we can see that after years of not logging in, my directional pad shortcuts are still in place. There's something you're not getting on console 1.3. Ah, the old menu style. You know, there was a time when I thought that I missed this interface, but I don't think I do. It's kind of a pain in the ass compared to the current menu style. Huh. Okay, there's a goldfish statue over some lava hooked up to a switch next to a teleporter. Don't remember what I was trying to accomplish there, but I'm, I'm sure it was for a good reason. Oh my god, what happened here? Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I think I actually thought that all these campfires would add up and buff me even more. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay, now this right here is the very first form of shelter I ever attempted to build. Yeah. I tried to use the dungeon. I mean, I had no idea what was going on. I remember having no clue how to create a spawn point. This is before I knew you could make wooden platforms. That just looks awful. Who does that? I'll never forget the feeling I had when I started this game. 
I sucked so badly, felt like I needed to read a textbook of Wikipedia. It was by far the greatest feeling I've ever had in my history of gaming. Over the next five years, I would go on to become an ultimate Terraria badass, maxing out tons of characters and worlds, rebuying the game so many times I don't even want to admit the number out loud, or even in my own head. And I can't say I'm that upset that the journey's end is among us. I got a lot out of this game. Now, after the literal rough patch that was console 1.3, how did this even more massive update actually land with players? Overall, I would have to say that my own experience with 1.4 has unfortunately been kind of fucking amazing. This is really the best time to play Terraria. The game is so enormous at this point that most human beings will not have enough time in their life to see all of the items in it, and Journey Mode is just one of the greatest surprises this game has ever had to offer. In terms of the stability of 1.4, there were a couple of thousand bug reports in the first month of its release, but this was a total success compared to when 1.3 hit consoles a few years ago. I mean, I didn't experience a single bug while playing 1.4. You know, that wasn't already there before. But I really think all of these bugs can be fixed by starting a new character, starting a new world, or buying a new computer. And I guarantee that. You know how I feel about starting over in this game. It's the best part of the game. And this update is so game-changing that the only way to even attempt to see everything in it is to start over from the beginning. So let's do that and finally dive into this update. The first major addition is Master Mode, which is harder than Expert Mode, you get yet another accessory slot, and you have access to a bunch of hot new pets, mounts, and shiny golden trophies or relics that you get from killing bosses and high-level enemies at the Master difficulty. Master Mode makes you feel like you suck when you're actually really good. It's like all of your amazing equipment suddenly isn't that amazing, and you really have to be good. Like, hole-in-one good. And as for the addition of golf, I know that I could go and download Chaos's elaborate and impressively made golf map and just do what everyone else and their mother is doing, but I would rather make my own course. Holy shit! Did you see that? I cleared that two block wide hole. I'm amazing. By the way, is it Chaos or Kaios? Or Kaios? I'm kidding, I know it's Chaos. But if you think about it, golf is the perfect minigame for Terraria. Anything that involves building or intricate construction just screams puzzles where you try to get a ball through an obstacle. In fact, this kind of makes me wish there was a weapon that behaved like a golf ball that you can just fling somewhere far ahead of you and then watch it destroy things and clear a path. Or what about just a mining golf ball that cuts through dirt? or an Axiom Verge-like drone that you can fling somewhere and then control remotely. There are definitely some places they can go with these mechanics. Speaking of mechanics, I do like being able to interact with objects, sit down, and actually hang out in your houses with other NPCs. But the NPC town and pylon system could see some improvement, in my opinion. I mean, I had no fucking idea how this worked. The game doesn't tell you anything about it. Once I finally learned how to get the pylons and properly set them up, being able to teleport around was definitely helpful, but I don't love that you can't use pylons during an invasion event, and that you have to be in pretty close proximity to one in order to use them. But whatever, the perks definitely outweigh the flaws. But what is by far the best aspect of Journey's End is Journey Mode. This mode is great for anyone who wants a more compressed, creative, and customizable Terraria experience. Or someone who has already played the game for hundreds of hours and wants to shake it up a little. Journey mode is some of the most fun I have ever had playing this game. It's the exact same game, except for a handful of game-changing features. You can manipulate the weather, freeze and speed up time, alter enemy spawn rates and difficulty, control infection spreading, adjust tile placement range, and so much more. I found myself using every one of these at some point. I do wish there was an on-screen reminder whenever you freeze time. The amount of times I forgot that it was frozen and just sat there wondering why the fuck nothing was happening. Where is the guide? 
Oh yeah, time is still frozen. But I cannot express enough how incredible this game becomes if you crank up the enemy spawn rate to its maximum increment while speeding up time. Just look at this. Holy crap! This is a bit much. I feel like I'm about to pass out. My vision is just blurring. This isn't just a great way to quickly farm items. It's also just beautiful to look at and really satisfying. I mean, listen to all those squishy sounds. Now here's the craziest part of all. The best thing about journey mode isn't even playing with these options, but the entirely separate research feature, which totally revamps the way you progress in this game. I had so much fun using this thing. In fact, I have dubbed this research system the poop system, but it's not as immature as you'd think. You see, poop stands for peripheral open object producer. Here's how it works. You basically just dump a certain amount of each item into this tool until you unlock that item in this research window. Once it's there, you now have the ability to poop out an infinite amount of that item. At any time, no ingredients necessary. And over time, you just become a walking, crafting, god mode machine. Actually, there is a totally separate god mode, but not even gonna get into that. But after you research all the bare essentials in the game, you'll soon be able to cut out some of the game's more grindy moments that some players might find to be repetitive. If you unlock infinite ore, you'll never need to mine. If you unlock infinite potions or plants, you'll never need to grow or farm ingredients. So naturally, the first thought I had here was, can you unlock the ability to create infinite money? And sure enough, you can. Wait a minute. I won't even need money because I can just clone everything instead of buying it. Oh well. At least I finally got to use that song in something. Now, if you get into the habit of researching every single thing that you pick up, managing your inventory becomes so much quicker because you no longer need an inventory. In fact, you can just get into this rhythm of scrolling through your item pack, throwing away anything you've already researched, and researching the stuff you haven't. Now that's inventory management. You won't even need to keep anything in chests if it's all accessible in the research menu. Now, it might sound like using the poop system will actually make the game easier and drastically shorter in playtime, but it kind of doesn't. Sure, it cuts out a lot of time, but sacrificing your items to research instead of using them creates its own set of challenges. Do you use your new hallowed ore to make some well-needed new armor? Or do you wait a little, save it all for research, so you can eventually just have infinite hallowed ore? You see where I'm going with this. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I find it kinda hard to go back to the regular game after spending so much time in journey mode. And it's not even because of the ability to poop out infinite items. Really, I just can't live without this increased torch placement range. Look at this. There's nothing like diving down a vertical tunnel and just spitting out torches, lighting up the entire area with ease. Now that's... Torchlight. I cannot envision any circumstance in which I'll ever have the opportunity to have sex again. But the last major new feature that I had an insane amount of fun with is the secret world seeds, or passwords that alter your world during world gen. For example, if you enter the release date of 1.4 as your world seed number, you will create a drunk world, where you start with the party girl instead of the guide, I'm guessing because she's the most drunk NPC. The surface is flooded with water, the underworld is flooded with lava, the lizard temple is colored green, you got some ocean caves, like uh, Echo the Dolphin, a new glowing moss biome, lots of living trees, a large dead tree that has the dungeon hidden underneath it, you have both Corruption and Crimson, along with both ore variants, and the entire soundtrack is replaced with the Terraria Otherworld soundtrack, which is amazing. It is worth it to play through a drunk world. Another world seed to take note of is Not the Bees, which generates a world that is all beehive and jungle, and all the water is replaced with honey. I've seen some utterly insane shit go down in this world. 
queen bee bosses spawning left and right no matter where you are on the map, while fighting hordes of you name it, constantly being stuck in honey and having no clue what is happening, it's amazing. Overall, Journey's End is hands down my favorite update this game has ever received. The sheer amount of little optimizations and improvements around every corner, the game has never been more fun to play, and it's never looked better. Watching the colors change while you're in fast time, coupled with the new enhanced wind effect that makes everything on screen feel alive, or just cutting through dozens of enemies in seconds with that maxed out enemy spawn rate, they managed to inject entirely new levels of fun into this already jam-packed game. While this is the end of Terraria's large-scale updates, the game will be played for as long as games are played. Now, I'd like to resurrect the dead elephant in the room for a second here. Although the sequel, Terraria Otherworld, was cancelled, recently on the Terraria Discord server, the game's creator Andrew Spinks, aka Redigit, stated that with 100,000 signatures and $15, he will open source it. And before you waste any time trying to analyze what he means by $15, it was a joke. It ain't happening. But even if Terraria Otherworld does somehow become open-sourced, something tells me that could have been its destiny all along. We know this player base loves its modding ventures. Maybe Terraria's sequel should be a collaborative public project. In fact, Terraria itself will probably continue receiving mods until the end of time. There is nothing to worry about here. I am totally not depressed that the game is ending and I'm not going to kill myself at all. I'm just going to get something from my car, and I will be right back. <laughs> <laughs>